Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Today's video is going to be comparing conventional lab work looking for infections versus our, our specialty test that can help pick up and detect infections. So I had a patient come into me last month and she presented with some symptoms, gas pain, constipation, diarrhea, acid reflux, uh, headaches, uh, some mood issues, and even some, um, some tingling, uh, stinging sensation in her leg area. And of course, one of the first places I always look at is I look at the gut because so many infections can create a major sequelae of symptoms such as mood and all the things I listed off. So we always want to look at the gut. So again, today's talk's going to be a little bit different. I don't have my whiteboard behind me, but we're going to dig in uh, on my screen here. So coming in here, we looked at her conventional lab work, and I'm going to put it right on screen. You'll see it in the background. And what you're going to see here is we got some blood work, and on that blood work, it's showing inflammation. So off the bat, you can see that the white blood cells are going to be on the lower side. I'm going to use my monitor here and my, my mouse to circle that. So you can see white blood cells are on the lower side. So we're thinking maybe a chronic infection. We go down here below, we see our monocytes, our eosinophils, and basophils on the higher side, which makes me think a more of an acute infection. Now, when I see eosinophils, I always think parasites, potentially. It can be allergies but mainly parasites. I see monocytes, I think gut inflammation. And then basophils, that can be just there from inflammation as well. Now when we go up a bit, we're gonna see neutrophils being low. When I see low neutrophils, I'm thinking chronic bacterial infection. So you can see everything for me goes back to the gut. So I'm thinking maybe an H. pylori infection, maybe a parasitic infection. Of course, all of this inflammation and damage is gonna create leaky gut as well. So before I dig into the next page, with this patient, we did a couple of things off the bat. We did an autoimmune diet, and we saw a significant improvement in some of the symptoms, some of the mood, uh, not quite with the energy, some of the mood and the anxiety, and just overall improvements in di digestion significantly got better going on an autoimmune and low FODMAP eating plan. So that's kind of the foundation. We don't just use the labs and use supplement programs and fancy things like that to promote healing. We start with simple diet and lifestyle modalities to help get inflammation down. And then from there, we can use specific lab tests. So off the bat, here's the conventional blood work, as you can see. But one of the biggest things that irked me is this patient told me their conventional doctor said nothing was wrong. Well, as you can see, a functional medicine doctor is going to look at this and be pulling their hair out like, of course, something's wrong. We see the white blood cells low. We see the eosinophils, basophils, and monocytes uh, elevated. We're thinking an infection. And then we see the low neutrophils, which make me think chronic bacterial infection. So we start off that, I'm kind of putting my hypotheses out, kind of week one, and then three, four weeks later, after we get some stool testing back, here's our specialty stool test. You can see off the bat, we have an H. pylori infection came back positive. You can see down the road here, we had elevations in fecal fat. That means we're not digesting our fat optimally. Now, if we know Physiology 101 on digestion, we need a nice low pH to activate our proteolytic enzymes, pepsin. That helps kick off protein digestion. That nice low pH triggers our gallbladder and our pancreas to produce lipase and enzymes to break down fat and emulsify fat via the gallbladder. So if we don't have the right digestion in the stomach, that's going to screw up digestion downstream. And instead of that first and second domino knocking over, well, if the first two don't fall, the third and fourth won't fall either. Hence, we see elevations in fecal fat. We think automatically low hydrochloric acid levels and low digestive enzyme levels naturally. Down the list, look what, look what came back here. We see two parasitic infections. Infections. We see Blasto and Giardia, and I've done videos on these just recently. One of my co-hosts, Evan Brand, came back with, I want to say he came back with Giardia and Crypto. We just had a podcast on that this week, so go see beyondwellnessradio.com for that podcast. But he came back with Giardia and Crypto, and this patient came back with Giardia and Blasto. So I've actually coined this term the three amigos because I've seen it a handful of times this year. You got H. pylori on one side. 
H. pylori is known to decrease stomach acid via the enzyme urease, which takes urea from protein metabolism, breaks it down into CO2 and ammonia. CO2 triggers the breath test for the H. pylori. That's what makes a, a breath test positive is the elevation of CO2. And the ammonia is a pH of 11, so that raises the pH away from the acidic zone, which then decreases the ability to activate those proteolytic enzymes. So. H. pylori, that's the first amigo that messes up digestion. Number two, we got the uh, blasto, which again, literally blast open. It eats our food and blast open, creating pain and inflammation in its various four stages. That's another one. And this patient had symptoms of digestive pain, which makes sense with the blasto. And then Giardia can also affect fat digestion too. It's known to live or, or inhabit the bile ducts as well and can create inflammation and make it harder to break down fat. And this patient had all of these symptoms, the acid reflux, the pain, the, the, the tons of patient diarrhea. So it totally makes sense here. And then again, one last thing we see is the IgA. And the IgA2 is very high. Now, IgA is an immune marker. It's what it's what uh, lines the mucosal membranes in our mouth, our our sinuses, digestive tract, urinary tract, vaginal canal, you name it, and it's our first line defense. And I always tell my patients, it's like the Star Trek, right? The Star Trek ship, it's got the force fields up, so when the Klingons attack, the laser beams literally bounce off the ship. And this is what happens with IgA. It's that force field, so when invaders come in, it protects us. Now. IgA will go really high off the bat when invaders are coming in. And you can see IgA2 is really off the charts here. But what's interesting is look at IgA1. It's in the very, very bottom part of the range, barely even registering at 0.44. So technically that's in the bottom, I want to say bottom 1%, bottom 0.1% of the range. So you can see IgA1, low immune stress, IgA2, hyperimmune stress, definitely an infection, definitely inflammation. And our, our mucosal membrane barrier is weakened on one side, but heightened on the other side. We have two different subtypes here. So what does this mean? What's the take home message? Well, number one, if you go to the conventional doctor and you're told you're okay, you gotta go see a functional medicine doctor. If this patient didn't come and see me, I'm, I'm confident in the next few months working together, we're gonna be able to get this person significantly better. But if they did not come to see me off the bat, they would think it's all in their head. They would probably be put on an acid blocking medication, maybe an antidepressant, and told to go home, which is really sad because there's three major infections here and we know it, and this isn't just something that's in her head. This is something that's real and there's physiological roots at the at the underlying level. And not to mention that we know the food, just making the food changes with the FODMAPs and the AIP, the autoimmune plan, made a massive difference. So lots and this patient's one out of millions that you know will be helped, but there are millions more that are being told it's all in your head and just being sent home. And I want people just to go back here, look at the conventional test. Now this, you, know, you can just see all of the markers that are off here. She was told she's fine. Now, I have patients that come in with tests that don't even look like this. Barely anything's even flagged. No L's or no H's, but things may be slightly out of range and we'll still do tests and we'll see tests that still come back with infections like this. So if you're feeling sick and you know something's not right and your doctor's told you, your lab tests are normal, even though something's wrong, you gotta dig in. This person did, and I'm very happy she did, because we're gonna be able to significantly help her health get to a higher level, and you can too. So click on screen, make sure you subscribe, get access to more videos and great information like this, and, and help, kind of really help all my patients get their health back in their hands. Thanks a lot, this is Dr. J signing off. Have a great day.